I'm sober for a long time now. And I always heard that. I always heard that women were quicker to essentially descend down into like full-blown alcoholism or addiction than men were. And I never really understood why. Yeah, we're creatures of habit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So simple. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. And it can be hard to change those habits too, right? It can. So I, for myself and for other people, I recommend starting a habit change in your follicular phase because we have more estrogen that in that phase and estrogen increases baseline levels of dopamine. And so when you have that extra dopamine, you're going to be more motivated to complete the original task. And then also in your luteal phase, you actually have more of those D2 receptors. So you're more in that habit formation phase. And so structuring your goal setting and your habit for transformational changes via your cycle is going to be really helpful. How do those hormones impact our brains, especially as we go throughout our lives? Because I've also heard that I can't remember which one you can correct me on this, but maybe low estrogen can contribute to cognitive impairment later in life. Exactly. So estrogen is incredibly neuroprotective. It increases baseline levels of dopamine, acetylcholine. It can increase BDNF, which is a growth factor within the brain that's incredibly helpful for our brain health. It can increase synaptic density, connections between neurons. So it's a really powerful neuromodulator in a positive sense. And when we think about estrogen and dopamine, that's why men are twice as likely to get Parkinson's disease because they don't have as much estrogen. So they have this sort of drop off and sensitivity towards Parkinson's disease. What's really important as we reach a phase in our life where HRT or hormone replacement therapy becomes an option, it's something that we really should consider for our brain health. Because if you do HRT after menopause, you don't get the cognitive benefits. But if you do it in peri, you will. And it's probably because if you don't have estrogen for so long, the damage is done. That's the thing with the brain. Once the damage is done, it's really hard to reverse. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. So we're talking about what we can do preventatively, but say that somebody is at the phase of their life where they've been diagnosed with some kind of cognitive impairment or they're just noticing signs. Maybe they're not at that age yet. Um, not that there's necessarily an age, but they are feeling like they have brain fog. They're feeling forgetful. Like, how should they go about navigating that I would look at it sort of in three pillars, exercise, sauna, and then supplements. So even especially if that person doesn't exercise at all, that's such an easy way to improve your cognitive health. Even just going on a walk for an hour a day is going to not only improve your mood, but also improve your cognitive health and your likelihood of further degrading. And it's important to to sort of spike in those high intensity workouts. I know people are scared about cortisol, but you just don't want to do it five times a week. Just do it twice a week and you're going to be OK. And sauna use is amazing, like we talked about. I also love spermidine, which is a supplement that is a terrible name, but it promotes something called autophagy which is the spring cleaning of your cells. And they showed in mild cognitive impairment patients that when they took spermidine, they had thicker hippocampal white matter tracts, they had better cognitive function, better memory, and it's likely through this autophagy mechanism. What about senolytics? Is that the same kind of thing? So senolytics kill senescent cells, which are cells that actively contribute to aging. They're also called zombie cells. They're different in that senescent cells are really bad because they basically spit out all these inflammatory molecules called SASPs. So they sort of hurt their neighboring cells too. Whereas autophagy is more about a single cellular issue and sort of clearing out the proteins, plaque formations, things like that, that can occur within a cell that has negative impacts on the cell's performance. And is that a daily thing or is it something that you cycle? Like I know senolytics, you can take them like three or four days once a month. Yeah. So one, I think for senolytics, it also depends on the senolytic. And two, with spermidine, some people say you should cycle it. It's not enough of an autophagy inducer that I would cycle it. It's not like fasting for 10 days. You know, I take spermidine every day. Do you take <laughs> senolytics too? I started taking fisetin. I'm honestly, the jury's out for me in terms of how it's com like actually helped my cognitive performance. I think the data on that's incredible because it passes the blood brain barrier, which is very rare. For drugs. So yeah, we'll report back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, how do you like quantify whether it's working for you or not? Do you just track things and track your 
brain and performance and all of that. Like, I feel like sometimes when I add a new supplement in, I'm kind of like, oh, I mean, it's not like always an instant gratification thing where I can really tell. So I think it's hard sometimes to be consistent with them because you don't know if it's working or not. I have like a three month schedule and then I'll really decide. But I just have them set out. It's planned like Sunday night. We have Monday through Friday and then we're taking them and it becomes a habit where it's I just don't think about it. And then I'll take I have to like memorize a lot of stuff. So I notice if something has helped. Yeah. For you, it's it's like right there. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Got it. Are there any supplements that are trendy um, or any supplements that were kind of trendy for a moment that have been proven to not be as effective as we thought they were? I'll go on the skin route. I think um, some of these collagen boosting supplements don't work at all. And they sort of propose themselves to be better than actually just taking collagen, despite the fact that there are hundreds of studies across thousands of patients and multiple meta studies showing that collagen is incredible for your skin. And so they're trying to say that something that boosts collagen indirectly is going to be better than that. It's no. Okay. So spermidine, we talked omegas, collagen, obviously you're a fan of senolytics. Anything else that people should consider for brain health? I would say you also want to make sure your inflammation's in check. So for women, you want to have like a B complex. A B complex is just going to be great for your overall health, your immunity, and your brain. 